All right, guys, Bielan here, back with a new video. In this video, I'm back with another Survivor ranking, and to mirror something I did last year with every Survivor finale, where I ranked every Survivor finale, this year I want to rank every Merge episode. However, through the process of watching all the Merge episodes, I obviously watched every Merge Tribal Council. So before we get to the ranking of the Merge episodes, here I want to rank every Merge Tribal Council in the history of Survivor US. Now, I will say that there are some wonky situations on what I constitute as the Merge Tribal. I mean, really, just the general thought is the first Tribal where every player in the game goes to Tribal to vote someone out together. Like, it is a pretty basic concept, but due to things like the hourglass twist and the twist in like survivor fiji obviously it kind of gets a bit wonky but again for like fiji i'm going to include the edgardo tribal for 41 42 i'm going to include the tribal right before the formal merge so again that's my definition of the merge tribal and with that we have 42 merge tribals to rank here and let's just get started at number 42 the worst merge tribal is very 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 easy and that is the merge tribal from survivor thailand and wow this is so boring this is literally the most straightforward merge tribal in the history of survivor us like there's literally no intrigue going on here chewy gun just outright has the numbers five to three there's not really any interesting talk going on here either ken goes home pretty easily as the biggest threat it's so basic there's nothing going on here it's here at 42 now number 41 we have one that is Kind of in a similar vein, especially because like in the episode, they literally tell you right before tribal that this person's going home. But I do think there's a sliver of entry going on here to where it's above Ken's. And that is from Survivor Africa, where we see Clarence go home. And again, this is another one that tribal itself is kind of boring. But we do have Clarence like knowing that he's going home and he does end up voting for Lex saying that I want to make your road harder to a win. And then... This is obviously a tribal that leads to Lex's paranoia, where we have T-Bird voting for Lex as well. Again, there's not much going on here, but having a sliver of something going on is better than Survivor Thailand. So for me, Africa is here at 41. Now, number 40, we're going on to a bit of a wonky one. Again, obviously, this isn't a formal merge, but at 40, we do have Survivor Palau, which this is going to be the Kobe boot in the first trial that they went to after Stephanie got absorbed into the tribe. And this one's, again, not particularly interesting. I mean, Kobe going home is a bit of a surprise in the episode, where unlike the previous two, it's not as foreshown. While you could definitely pick up the hints along the way, they never actually show the vote flipping onto Kobe. So at least that's like a minor pro here. Also, I did find it funny how Jeff Probst calls out Stephanie for dropping out of the comp for pizza. I find that funny too. But again, outside that, it's a pretty straightforward vote. Janu's completely left on the outs. Kobe is blindsided. We do have a confessional from Ian saying it's time for you to get whacked, which I always found funny. But outside that, again, pretty standard tribal. It's here at 40. Now number 39, another pretty straightforward tribal. We are going to Survivor Panama. And again, this one is really boring as well. It's actually up for debate with Ken's as the most boring tribal, where it's very straightforward, six to four vote based on tribal lines. Though I will say that it's not 100% clear who exactly is going home. That is something that shakes things up where you don't know if it's Nick or Austin. Also, we do have Austin like admitting to throwing immunity, which is like, why are you doing this? You get some cockiness from Kasaya talking about why they all dropped out when they knew that they weren't going to get food. And we do get like some fun reaction from Shane when he starts to get votes. And also Austin being surprised that he ends up staying here. But again, not much going on here for me. It lands here at 39. Number 38, another one that I think the merge episode that surrounds this boot is fantastic. However, the actual tribal itself is a bit underwhelming, and that is from Survivor Marquesas, where we have Boston Rob going home. And I mean, like this entire episode is Boston Rob really scrambling to save himself, yet he just stops at tribal. Tribal ends up being a pretty mundane affair where you know Rob is going home. And he actively doesn't throw John or Zoe under bus, having said that people have lied to him, but he's not going to name who. And yeah, yeah, I find that kind of underwhelming. Though also we do get a lot of foreshadowing towards the eventual John boot, where we have like Sean's confessional saying your time is coming. And when Rob eventually gets voted out, we do have this like really cocky smirk from John as he walks away. I think that's always funny too. So again, there's like slivers of intrigue in this, but for the most part, pretty mundane. It's here at number 38. 
Now number 37, we're jumping forward quite a bit where every single we've talked about so far has kind of been a bit more old school. For number 37, we're jumping all the way to Blood versus Water where we have the Arispu. And this is one that really the only notable thing about this tribal are the reactions to the Aris blind side from Aris himself and Vetus. But really outside of that, this is such a mundane tribal because like this is something that had been set up for like three or four episodes at this point. The Aris downfall that, again, it was so apparent that it was coming that by the time it actually happens here, it was so obvious it was going to happen. And the rest of the tribal is just very mundane. There's nothing really interesting going on for the vote. And then when we get to the vote, again, like it's obvious ours is going home, but it is that element of them being blindsided and their reactions that prop it up a bit, but again, not enough to really put it too, too highly here. And it's here at number 37. Number 36, onto tribal that kind of shows like the worst case scenario for a modern merch tribal and that being the merch tribal from survivor game changers where you see Haley go home but it's really like who cares i mean it's either Haley or michaela that's pretty obvious from very early on but both of them are just pawns in the game not actual power players and this is a point in survivor where the merge vote is essentially people going with the consensus and not really starting like the battle that eventually comes in the very next round where we have Ozzy go home, then we have Debbie go home. And like, that's when the game gets interesting. Here, if the Haley vote, it's pretty mundane. Now, that being said, I think the tribal itself I mean, is for the most part kind of boring, but you do have this fun little moment where Haley talks about being willing to do a strip search. And we have this like funny reaction where we see like Sarah being disgusted, but then we also see like Troyzan being excited. I always found that kind of funny. But again, in terms of the vote itself, it really is... A mostly mundane affair while Haley is blindsided here it's like who really cares it's really not a blind side to the audience and it's also a person who hadn't been that prominent on the show up till that point so again like I don't really find this one that entertaining here at number 36 now number 35 we have one that another one that should have been very entertaining very underwhelming that's not and that is from Survivor Winners at War we do have Wendell's Boots which really is this high solely from the fact that Wendell is blindsided alongside Nick and Michelle and we do get their reactions plus also we have this fun Adam confessional where he holds up Wendell's name and says it's either you or me tonight I know that do you and I always found that really fun and then most of the stuff before the vote is like pretty mundane though we do get some interesting talking points like Sophie bringing up the concept that it's okay to not be in every conversation we've talked about not wanting to be looked at as paranoid and overall it's just a very baseline tribal it's not anything too special but it's not really boring either it's fine we do at least get a semblance of a blind side, and we have a couple notable moments. So for me, enough to land here at 35. Now at number 34, keeping with modern seasons, another one that was the most interesting vote, but at least had a bit more going on during the tribal itself, and as the merge tribal from Survivor, Second Chance. And a lot of this comes from the fact that we have this like Cass versus Tasha rivalry going on during this tribal where... Like Cass mentions that she's not playing a chaotic game this time. And we have this big reaction from Tasha and Savage. And they end up fighting over whether or not Tasha said Bayon is over. Which again, at least there's something going on before the vote here, which there really wasn't any of the ones that we've talked about so far. Also through this, we do get a lot of Sierra's like preaching about how you have to play to win. You got to make big moves. And man, I could take it or leave it. But I do find it funny how it is Jeff in this tribal that mentions voting blocks which I don't believe becomes like a prominent thing in the season until a tribe or two later. So I do find it funny that it's Jeff himself being the first one to mention it here. But again, the vote is kind of obvious. It's obviously going to be Cass going home. Though we do also get this fun reaction from Tasha learning that Cass can be part of the jury. So that's funny too. So again, overall, a fine tribal, predictable result, but little moments here and there that make it stand out to be at number 34. Now 33, we're moving on to a tribal that I really thought was going to be higher. I actually came into this list thinking that this was going to be at least in the top half, but it ends up not being so. And that is the Merge Tribal from Australian Outback. And this is one that, one, is really rushed. The show really does not spend much time before the vote. And when we get to the vote, it's kind of obvious what's going to happen. Where they even don't even bother to set up the suspense here by showing Kucha voting for Colby, which makes you instantly know that, okay, Kucha's going to lose. And then we get the 5-5 vote between Colby and Jeff. During which I did find it funny how Jeff himself is just like rushing through the votes. Again, not really adding much gravitas to it, but 
At least here we do get the quotable line from Kobe where they give their last pleas and Kobe does say, I only know one way to play this game and that's full tilt. And I do find that line funny. But again, we get another tie on the revote, tiebreaker. Jeff goes home. He has one vote that he knows of, which again, dumb, this entire tiebreaker situation of them not knowing how many votes they have. But as a whole, very mundane. I was actually kind of underwhelmed by how mundane this one ends up being, mainly because like you kind of know what's going to happen the moment they reveal the Kucha vote and not much of entry happens outside of that. So again, like I have it this high largely because like this is a pretty important merge tribal. The one that I just didn't find as entertaining as I wanted it to on the rewatch. And to be honest, same thing goes to the next one. At number 32, we do have the merge tribal from Survivor Vanuatu, which again, also same thing. I really thought this one was going to be higher. I feel like this is a tribal that I remember the moment where the final Rory vote comes out and they play this really over dramatic music making it sound like as if the entire game is over. But really, the rest of the tribal is just kind of fine. I mean, like, the one interesting moment at the very beginning is Julie coming in with a heart painted on her chest that has Jeff written on it, which, again, weird that this is a thing that happened on this show. But beyond that, it's a pretty mundane tribal, though we do get, again, obviously a 6-4 to four vote, which is kind of interesting. And at least there's some intrigue on whether or not Twyla and Julie are going to flip. And I think we get a fun confessional from Rory where he does say his vote for Amy is a personal vote and he has no respect for her and he hopes like a bad rash she'll finally be gone. And I did find that funny. But again, as a whole, just a very fine merge tribal here. It's here at 32. Now 31, another one that I really thought was going to be higher as well. And that comes from Survivor All-Stars. And I think this is another situation where the merge episode itself is much better than the actual tribal itself. Or what's so great about the merge episode is this entire downfall of Lex. But the tribal itself, you know Lex is going home, and it is just kind of a mundane affair. Now, there is a bit of emotion going on, the fact that, I mean, it is pouring rain. And through that, we're seeing all the players be soaked and cold. But also, we have Rob saying, I know we're playing the game, and I know emotions are real, but if you're my friend, you're my friend. And again, we have a lot of this like very complex talk about the place friendship does in the course of Survivor and it ends with Lex still being voted out here. Though we also get this debate of like, is Kathy going to keep immunity or not? That's a thing that happens. We have Rob voting for Lex and while doing so says, thanks for keeping Amber around. So again, like there's some semblance of decent moments here, but again, it is a mostly mundane vote that is mostly propped up by this entire downfall of Lex. Now at number 30, we're moving on to a series of more modern tribal councils but one that are really not that interesting outside of the vote result so that was obviously something that made it so i can't put these too too much higher but at number 30 the first one we're going to go to is actually the most recent one we're going to survivor 42 where we have the lydia boot and again this one is very mundane like the actual events of the tribal itself up until the vote kind of boring i mean we do get one notable moment from marianne and drea kind of quibbling over whether or not they agree on what marianne said was the theme of this tribal and again this was just dumb but it is a funny moment but outside that i mean really there's not much entry going on here outside of the vote which does end up being a seven to two to two to one vote which is interesting but i never found the tribal of this round to be particularly interesting even though the overall episode is pretty strong but again because the actual tribal is mostly just fine it's here at number 30 now we're number 29 and we're moving on to one that I could definitely see the argument for it being lower, mainly because of the entire context around it. However, if we're just taking this tribal as one individual piece without factoring in the stuff around it, I do think it's actually a decent tribal, and that is the tribal from Survivor, Island of the Idols. We do have the Kelly boot. And again, like it is the Dan Spilo stuff that obviously harms the overall outlook on this season and particularly this portion of the game. How if we take that out, I do think this is actually a really interesting vote. Like this is a vote where Kelly is being blindsided with two idols in her pocket. And along the way, we do see Kelly think about playing her idols. Like we do see her asking Lauren if we're okay and have Lauren lie to her and we get a lot of talk about being socially aware across the tribal and really this downfall for Kelly could have been a really interesting storyline had it not been wrapped around the Dan Spilo stuff that obviously is a major dampening on it and even through this vote I mean we do have like Dan fist pumping when Kelly gets voted out and then when she puts her torch down he says yeah put that torch down like again not great 
But I think on paper, this is a very fascinating vote to see the old Vokai fracture here. And really, this is where Tommy and Lauren really take control of the game. And again, Kelly getting blindsided, two idols in her pocket, one that she literally just found right before Tribal. It is a potential fantastic moment that is harmed by Dan's below. And because of that, here at number 29. Number 28, moving on to Tribal, that really doesn't have anything of interest going on until the actual blindside. And that is the Tribal from Survivor Kara Moen. And again, this is one that, like, before Tribal, obviously everyone's playing KG, everyone's pretending like the fans are blatantly on the bottom, and through that, there's not much going on, but then we get to the actual vote itself, and we obviously get this 7-5 to five blind side for Corinne, where she gives some really great reactions. We get Philip calling Corinne one of the most selfish people he's met in his life. Again, it is a really fun blind side, but one that the Tribal around that blind side isn't particularly great, but the reactions to the blind side are really strong, and that's what leaves it here at 28. Now, number 27, we're actually going to a series of older school tribals here. Each of them not having the most interesting vote-offs, but having at least some other intrigue happening along the way. And at 27, we are starting it off with Survivor Guatemala, where again, the vote-off is very boring. Brandon is clearly going home. It's a 6-4 to four vote, tribal lines. But something that does happen at this tribal that is really fun is that we do have Bobby John and Jamie arguing pretty much the entire time over Bobby John saying that he has no class and we really have them like really just yelling at each other with them clearly not listening to each other either and we even have this shot of Jeff where he looks like so disappointed at them that I find it funny but again really the tribal as a whole not particularly interesting boring six to four vote but it is that arguing between Bobby John and Jamie that leaves it as high as it is here at number 27. Number 26 moving on to a very notable merge round but another one that the tribal itself isn't the most interesting in the world, though it does have a couple good moments, and that is from Survivor, the Amazon, where we have the Roger boot, which, again, is a another one where I feel like the episode as a whole is better than the individual tribal, where the individual tribals, at the point where we already know that Roger is going home and all the setup to it already happened. So because that that's kind of just boring, though we do see some bickering between, like, Roger and Dina over how the women were treated when making the shelter. We do have Roger talking about how he didn't need immunity, which is obviously ironic considering he ends up getting voted out. I always like the Dina confessional where she says, reality check and mate. And we have her saying, never underestimate the power of a woman, which is a fun scene. And then obviously we get Rob's confessional, which is weird because like this has actually been cut out of the versions of the show online now. So if you want to watch the scene, you have to watch it separate from the official sources. But we have Rob's Casey Kasem impression but again like the overall tribal itself is pretty mediocre where it's like very clear Rogers going home so not much intrigue from that level but again, some fun character moments along the way here at number 26 number 25 one that I think is very much on par with the Roger one and I think is better in some ways worse in other ways here at 25 we do have the merge tribal from survivor Pearl Islands where here we do see Savage obviously go home which I think is slightly better in the sense that it's not 100% that Savage is going home, unlike it is with Roger, where at least there's like a way that Savage can get out of it, though it's pretty clear it's not going to happen. But again, at least there's a level of suspense there. We also have like Burton giving immunity to Rupert, and that's something. But I mean, really, the tribal itself is actually super quick. They don't really do much talking before the vote. But then when we get to the vote, we get Savage voting for Lil John for talking too much smack, which I always found funny. And then we get Johnny Fairplay's like Randy Savage impersonation when voting for Savage, and I found that fun too. Now, I will say, I do find the vote reveal very weird where I don't know why they did this but Jeff for some reason shows five of the savage votes first and then goes to fair plays votes and then obviously the final vote being savage but it was such a weird vote reveal where usually obviously you go back and forth but I guess they were trying to like give savage some hope there but it's really weird by making it seem like maybe it could be a tie but it is really weird the way they approach this. So, okay, overall, kind of a mixed tribal. I think it's better than the Roger one in the sense that I think there's more interesting dynamics going on, but I do think it's worse in the sense that there's probably not as many notable moments, but considering it's still not without it, and I do think the vote itself is more interesting, it does land here at number 25. Now, number 24, moving back to modern Survivor seasons. Actually, we're going to stick with modern Survivor for a little bit here. At number 24, we have a very wonky tribal, and that is the tribal from Survivor Edge of Extinction. Where I think this is one where 
the vote is really great. I think the Joe Blind side is really great, where it is this kind of insane vote of a six to three to two to two vote. Like kind of insane that in a thirteen person tribe they pull off a plurality vote there. So Joe gets blind side there, and we also get like really great reactions for a lot of the other players. As again, over half the tribe was out of the loop on this vote. Where I always love this, where we get this series of reactions that are really fun, where Kelly Warner says, good play, guys. We get Lauren saying brilliant, and it cuts to Reem saying lame, which I always found really funny. Outside that, I mean, it's a pretty standard tribal. I mean, it's not really boring per se, but there's not much of that much intrigue going on. Though it is funny to see how much the commas are talking about how it'd be like inhumane to send Rick back to the edge, despite that being what Kelly and Lauren are thinking was going to happen. Also, we do have like a little bit of bickering between Vic and Joe, where Victoria mentions getting rid of a big threat and Joe instantly thinks, oh, that must mean me. Which, I mean, to be fair, he was right. But then Victoria goes on this spiel of there's different types of threats than physical ones. And again, like I think there's like little moments along the way and also a really interesting vote that does leave it here at number 24. Number 23, we're moving on to a very similar tribal and that is the one from Survivor Co. Wrong. Where again, this is one of those weird situations where the merge episode does end with the Neil Medivac. So here we're actually going to the next episode to get to the merge tribal. Nick going home again, another really great blindside. It is a six to two to one to one vote where we have a really fun reaction from Nick, who really thought he was safe there. We have some really interesting dynamics where all tribal lines just completely break over the course of this first round, where all the women gather together to blindside Nick here. And we have so much confidence from the Jason Scotts of the world, where they don't think anything's going wrong here. We have Ty out of the blue just mentioning the super idol in front of the entire tribe, to which we have some surprised reactions, saying that he thought everyone knew, which I thought was funny. Also, funnily, we have Debbie, of all people, voting Nick, saying overconfidence is a weakness, which, again, this is Debbie. So, again, like, I think there are fun moments throughout this tribal. And at the end of the day, like, it is kind of similar to the Joe one. I think I put it slightly above it just because I feel like there's a bit more fun of player interactions. And obviously, we get to know this cast better than the Edge of Extinction one. So, again, leaves it a bit better here at 23. Now, number 22, moving on to another very similar tribal, the one that isn't as big of a blind side necessarily. Though, I mean, we still get some fun reactions to it, and that is from Survivor Millennials versus Gen X, where Michelle gets voted out. Again, it is a 9-4 to four vote where most of the tribe is in on it, though we do get some fun reactions from Jay and Will. We also get a lot of focus around Taylor in this tribal, with him having been caught stealing food. And, like, Jeff really eats this up, where he really loves talking about Taylor here, where he takes, like, a poll of asking who's hungry in order to mock Taylor for Taylor saying that he's stealing food because he's hungry. Then we obviously have him transitioning to this to asking, oh, is this just a difference between Millennial and Gen X? Which is, again, that's the season for you. But that all leads up to like Taylor not being concerned about going home, and he says, rock on, which is just funny. We also have him saying that there's nothing you can do to stop what's going to happen tonight, all while like directly staring at Adam, to which Adam points that out, which I find that funny. And again, like as a whole, again, another fine tribal. I think the interactions between the players here is pretty interesting. And one where we still get a semblance of a blindside. Again, not as big of a blindside as the last couple we talked about, but still a decent blindside that does leave us with some fun reactions. So for me, it's here at number 22. Number 21, we're moving on to another weird circumstance where, again, this is technically not in the merge episode because the merge episode had a quit, but the tribal's fun nonetheless, and here we do have the tribal from San Juan del Sur. And again, we're starting to get to the point where these are some pretty good tribals. I do think this is a solid one where we have a lot of fighting for power here between Josh and Jeremy, where they're both courting John and Jacqueline during this tribal and trying to secure their vote, with them being like openly talked about as the swings here. We do get a lot of talk about the men's misogynistic behavior, not including Jacqueline in any of the conversations, which leads to Keith being upset that they're using their flatulence against them, where Keith says, we're not at the Hilton, everybody has gas, and that was like a funny line to me. But again, the bulk of this tribal is like this battle between Josh and Jeremy that culminates here, seeing them fight over John's vote, and to see the eventual blind side of a 6-5 to five vote where Josh ends up getting taken out. Again, it is a fun result there, fun tribal. I think it's a solid one as a whole. It's here number 21. 
Now number 20, we're moving back to another tribal that this one isn't as interesting gameplay wise. Like while it is a close vote, it was kind of obvious it was going to be a close vote. However, there's a lot of bickering in this tribal and that comes from Survivor Gabon. Now I will say that this bickering on the rewatch was actually kind of icky where I definitely feel like there's some microaggressions going on here between Randy and Crystal with Randy seeming to be like irrationally upset at Crystal and like giving out a list of the reasons he hates her, including that her and GC were running the tribe like a gang and that definitely has not aged well but again this arguing between the two is still entertaining to watch we then have sugar showing her great awareness by saying she's not annoying anybody which again also ages well but I think the main part of what makes this tribal as great is the voting section of it. Not because the vote itself is that interesting. Again, it's a five to four vote. Pretty clear that Sugar's going to flip. She does. Charlie's vote out. During which also, it's like, why is Charlie surprised he's getting votes? It's like, we see the Charlie votes come up and it seems like the CODA members are like really shocked that it's like, why? I guess they were thinking it was maybe Randy instead, but still, I don't know why this is like such a major blindside for them. But again, like the main intrigue here comes from randy voting crystal and just saying bitch and then walking away i found that funny you also have randy just voting down cc to which jeff does his classic whose vote is this and tells him to write a name down next time again that's always fun too so again like I, I think the randy versus crystal rivalry here is really what makes this tribal even though it does get icky particularly at the beginning of it i think it does lead to really fun tv and it is here number 20 now, number 19, we're jumping forward to a more recent tribal. And again, this is a very similar one. Very close vote. Obvious where the vote is going to go, but does have some fun bickering in between. And that is the merge tribal from Survivor, HHH. Where again, we have a Jessica boot here. Kind of obvious that that was going to happen, though. We do get some fun from Joe really just going all out in this tribal, thinking that he's the target and tries to put the votes onto himself. Through doing so, we do have Mike doing a Joe impersonation during all this, which is kind of fun as well. And then we have Joe pulling out his idol in front of everybody, all leading up to Joe playing his idol on himself, to which obviously they end up voting for Safeo in Jessica instead. And all this is pretty fun. I, I do like the overall flow of this tribal. It actually kind of reminds me a bit of how the merch tribal Kageon happens, just obviously the result doesn't end up being nearly as interesting. But the structuring of the tribal is very similar to where Joe kind of acts as this Tony figure that threatens the use of the idol. But okay, here it's both all for not and then also the vote ends up being kind of predictable, which is obviously a massive step down from it, which is why it's here at number 19. Now number 18, we're moving on to a tribal that another one that the boot itself is kind of boring, but we do have a lot of bickering along the way. And that is from Survivor David versus Goliath, where we do have Elizabeth going home. And again, for the most part, this is a boring tribal up until the point where Elizabeth decides to blow up Angelina's game, where she reveals that Angelina told her that she was going home, to which everyone recognizes that this is Angelina trying to do jury management, which definitely puts a spotlight onto her. During which I do love this like cut to Mike just laughing at what Angelina is doing, which I do find funny. But then we do also have like Gabby joining in in the fight and ends up starting to cry, which is, I mean, part of Gabby's MO. And then we have a level of a live tribal element to it where Alec does get up to go to Dan. And while it doesn't really lead to anything, this is the first time we're talking about any aspect of a live tribal on this list and again the vote ends up being pretty obvious elizabeth's going home it's actually the first ever unanimous merge vote which is a 12 to 1 vote which is even more ridiculous but i do love how like upset angelina is when she's voting for her, saying that i was trying to save you and that was poor form tonight but again, as a whole really the bickering between angelina elizabeth and gabby is really what makes this tribal it's here at number 18. now number 17 we're moving on to Another similar tribal that, again, the vote off is obvious, a lot of bickering. Here at 17, we do have Survivor Nicaragua, where, again, Alina going home, 100% obvious, everyone knew it. However, we do get a lot of fun bickering between Jane and Marty, where he mentions that Jane made a mistake within 30 minutes in the game of aligning with the three worst players that went home back to back to back. And this leads to Jane saying, whoa, 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 I tried to make an alliance with you and you fluffed me off. He then says that if she makes it to final three, that she will win. You can't write a better story. I and mean, all this bickering between two is so much fun to me. But I also love like this little moment where obviously what happens throughout this episode is that Nianka does end up stealing some food from camp. 
but it's never addressed in tribal until the point where Dan decides to raise his hand so that he can talk, which I do find funny. And this will lead to Fabio and Nyanka arguing over her stealing the food, where she mentions that she's already been punished by having no one talk to her. And to add to all this, we get a really great voting confessional from Benry when voting Alina, where he says, you are a 100% grade A dirt squirrel, and it's time for you to go home. And then does a squirrel imitation, which is so weird because like Benry is such a nothing figure across this season, but he has such great voting confessionals. That I do find that really humorous. Again, overall, really fun tribal here. It's here at number 17. Now, number 16 is one that I actually don't think is that good. I, I will say that I think there's one big moment in this tribal that obviously propels it. But like outside that, the overall tribal as a whole is kind of just meh. And that one comes from Survivor China, where you have Jamie playing the fake idol. The first fake idol play which leads to some obviously great reactions. We have Jean Robert thinking that he's going home at the point that she plays the idol. And then for it to be fake, he has this relieved reaction. That's really fun. We do also have a bit of bickering between John Robert and Courtney, where John Robert says that Courtney's now going to skate her way to final two and three because she's not a threat. And then Courtney takes it as him saying the biggest threat is the little blonde, which I do find to be a humorous moment. And this leads to James being upset that John Robert won't just shut up. And again, all of this I think is really fun, but I think as a whole, there's probably better tribals that we've talked about. I do think the legacy of this Jamie playing a fake idol does propel this one a bit to where it is here at number 16. At number 15, we're going from a fake idol play to a real idol play. At number 15, we do have Survivor Philippines. Which, yeah, this is the first trial we're talking about that does have a successful idol play. And, and here we do have Penner using the idol successfully. And in turn, the split vote ends up landing on RC. But along the way, we do get the Abby and RC rivalry with them trying to hash it out. But Abby really just not listening to any of it. We do have Pete saying, I never liked you when voting for RC, which is a fun confessional. And also a lot of fun from this also ends up being the fact that despite Penner playing his idol correctly here, he's still blindsided by this vote with him thinking that the votes were going to land on Pete, but instead, obviously his own alliance ends up splitting the vote onto RC, which ends up screwing him over. I think that's also a fun element of this. So again, overall, a really strong tribal, one that at least has a bit more interesting of an actual vote out here and does have some fun moments along the way. So for me, it's here at number 15. Now number 14, we're moving on to a tribe that does have great reactions and does technically have a big blind side, but is one that's kind of foreshown along the way. But again, it's still such a big moment for a season that ends up being as high as it is, and that is Survivor Cook Islands. Where again, I think this is another one where the merge episode as a whole is probably better than the individual tribal, where by the time of tribal, it does become pretty apparent that Penner is going to flip. And really, there isn't that much going on before the actual vote. I mean, there's talk about certain relationships where they end up calling out Adam and Candace, to which Adam and Candace call out Becky and Yule, to which Penner says that their relationship are different from his and Hazi's, which I do find to be a little humorous moment. But again, as a whole, you get five to four vote, Penner flips. To be honest, either way, Nate is going home. It really doesn't matter. All that matters is whether or not Yule has the idol or not. But we do get some great reactions from Yule, where obviously he's relieved that he doesn't have to play the idol. And then we have Nate's shocked face, where he's not even looking when the final vote is revealed. And then he just hears his name, and you see his shock as he uncovers his eyes. Again, that's a great moment. And one that could have been higher on the list had the overall trial been a little bit more entertaining. Now we're on number 13. And number 13, this might be a big of a surprise because I do feel like this is one that most people consider a top merge tribal. However, it is this low mainly because I do think it ends up being really rushed. And that is the tribal from Survivor Borneo where we have this iconic Gretchen blindside of a four to one to one to one to one to one to one vote where somehow... Every member outside the Tagi Alliance ends up voting for a different person, leading to the Tagi Alliance taking the day and voting out the leader of Pagong in Gretchen. Again, an incredible moment for the show. The problem is the setup. Really in the fact that there's not much deliberation before the vote. I mean, it really is super rushed. Though something I do find humorous is that Sean does talk about how he worries that there's alliances out there. But again, we get to all these votes and most of them are shown, which I do find kind of interesting. And we do get some notable confessionals from like Jenna voting Jervis and just saying Moo. We do get Sean explaining the alphabet strategy and that Colleen is the first on his list. But again, we get to the blind side and we have this great reaction from Gretchen where she says, oh God, it's me, which is really iconic. But again, I just feel like the tribal as a whole though is extremely rushed. To where I can't quite put it in the top of the top tier. But it is obviously a very iconic one. And because that lands here number 14. Now number 12. We're moving on to 
An interesting tribal here, largely because of one individual moment, but there is some good stuff along the way as well. And as obviously the Micronesia merch tribal where Eliza plays the fight idol, plays the stick, which ends up not being real. But through that, I think we get some good moments. We obviously have like Ozzy snickering as she gets up and we have Ozzy admitting to him having the idol immediately after a fake one is played. And when Jeff throws it into the fire, we have Ozzy saying, come on, that took hours to make. And again, all of this is like a really humorous scene. But even before this, even before the actual vote, we do have a bit of a tiff between Eliza and Parvati. We have Alexis saying Eliza played an incredible game, to which obviously they noticed the past tense. So again, I mean, this is a trial that is almost entirely revolved around Eliza, but she does bring some interesting moments along the way. And for that, for me, it's here at number 12. Now, number 11 is a trial that I'm surprised this high, considering it comes from a season that is known as one of the most boring seasons of all time, but there is a lot of fun bickering in this one, and that is from Survivor One World, where we have Jonas going home, but along the way, he gets into numerous squabbles with Tarzan and this is one of the most ridiculous tribals possibly of all time where again Jonas is on the outs obviously he's about to go home so at the last second at tribal here he decides to throw Michael under the bus saying that he is voting for Michael and through that Tarzan says that he disrespects what Jonas just did and he says that you don't have the fight for your life in this game which is like okay to which again I'm under the assumption that Tarzan thought that Cat was going home but Jonas knew that the votes weren't there for Cat, but through him trying to flip the votes at the last second, it causes Tarzan to be upset at him for flipping the votes onto another guy. So again, I get the circumstance here, but it is still a really ridiculous situation where again, we lead to a Jonas and Tarzan fight where now Tarzan wants Jonas out and openly says, I'm sick of fighting with you and I hope you go home tonight. And we also get some talk from Chelsea where she like openly calls Tarzan dead weight in the middle of tribal, which I do find funny. But again, the vote itself ends up being obvious tend to vote for Jonas but we get a great exit from Jonas where he says no hard feelings to Tarzan and Tarzan says hard feelings to you okay incredible moment I, I love this tribal like this bickering between Jonas and Tarzan is incredible TV probably would have been an all-time great one had they actually been able to flip the votes onto Michael or something but still a really incredible one it's here at number 11 at number 10 moving on to a tribal that didn't come to mind when I thought of really good ones but this one definitely ends up being stronger than I remembered and that is the Merge Tribal from Survivor Samoa, where here we do get, again, a lot of bickering between Eric and the Foa Foa members, where Eric calls Jason and Nigma, and we get some arguing between the two, with Jason talking about how much he's had the fight in his life, to which Eric says, I like that, to where Jason says, I don't care what you like, which I found funny. I also do find it funny how there is some foreshadowing here, where Eric does say he respects Russell for not stopping the try, but his type of competitiveness is misaligned. If he doesn't change, he won't respect it, which okay, I don't necessarily agree. And to be fair, I think this is entirely coming from Eric being on a bit of a high horse here. But I do think it is interesting that they set up this downfall for Russell in what Eric is saying here. But again, Eric just ends up being really cocky across this entire tribal, talking about how he doesn't see what Fofo could even bring to Galoo. And that he would be floored to see them flip over even one vote and saying that even that's a long shot. And again, like this entire downfall for Eric is really fun where we do even see Russell end up playing his idol and flushing it. And we see Jeff like being surprised when he does so, which I do find funny. But then like Eric, who has an idol in his pocket, doesn't end up playing it and ends up getting blindsided by almost the entire tribe. Literally only Shambo doesn't vote for him. And even Shambo knew that it was going to happen. So again, like a really bad misread from Eric here and a really fun downfall for him. So because of that, it lands here at number 10. Now number 9, moving on to a similar tribal, another person blindsided with an idol in their pocket, in another situation where they should have known that they were in danger, and that comes from Survivor Token Chains, where we do have the Brendan boot. And obviously the blindside itself is really fun, we have a 4-3-2 to three to two vote, where Brendan doesn't play the idol. And I always like the editing of this, where when the third Sierra vote comes up, the music ends up getting more dramatic there and I always like this blind side here but again there are some great moments along the way I mean we get a lot of coach here which has some fun coach Jeff interactions where Taj talks about coach's Amazon story and says that it's unbelievable to which coach says that he toned it down 
and says that he left out the part about the tribe talking about eating his asshole, which is such a funny line. Then Coach says that he's been in five, six, seven, or eight life and death situations, ends up running through them, and then follows this up by saying they cannot question my integrity and honesty, which again, fun Coach content there. And then we also have like Coach talking about how he wants to surround himself with warriors, during which Jeff tries to move on, but then Coach like immediately cuts him off immediately afterwards. We then eventually have Brendan admitting to him having the idol, which is something. And then obviously the big moment of the tribal for me is the voting confessional where again, coach once again says ancient samurai say that if you want to win the war, you have to cut the head off the dragon. You, my friend are the dragon and I am the dragon slayer. And again, this entire quote was so ridiculous, but it's so great. I mean, again, you gotta love coach across the season, like such a ridiculous character, but really is what props this tribal up to being an all time great one. And it's here at number nine. Now number eight, another tribal that revolves around a character almost as ridiculous as Coach. At number eight, we do have the tribal from Ghost Island, where again, this entire episode is this big dunking on Chris Noble, leading to his eventual boot. But unlike a situation where like the Roger boot, which is obviously way far back, I do still think that there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in this tribal where we get a lot of bickering between Dom and Chris, where they run through their entire rivalry from day one during which Dom ends up bringing out his fake idol. We have Dom telling Jeff, I don't know what to do with this guy, Jeffrey. And that this is a showdown. We have Chris calling himself someone that everyone gets along with, which again, obviously ages well. But something I do also like about this rivalry between Dom and Chris is that by the end of it, they're very respectful towards each other. When Chris gets up to vote, he says one love. And when Dom votes for Chris, he does say Chris Noble's name out loud, which is really funny. Obviously, when he eventually gets voted out, Chris does say good game and hugs Dominic. And like all that is a level of respect I did find kind of interesting here. But obviously, along the way, we do also get Wendell's iconic speech telling Chris to stop rapping and to put the mic down, bro. And that's really fun. We have Chris not playing his idol, despite it only being available to be used in two trials. It's like, how are you not playing this idol at this position where Dominic literally said your name out loud? that he's voting for you and you're still not playing the idol. That's ridiculous. We have Dominic obviously playing the legacy advantage, though it doesn't matter. Chris goes home. And even then, like, we have this fun moment on his way out where he forgets his torch and has to go back for it again. This is a comedy of errors. This is a hilarious tribal the entire way through. I found it really fun. It's here, number eight. Now, number seven. And for me, these are definitive top seven. These top seven for me are the tribals that are definitely the strongest gameplay wise. I think these are the biggest blind sides or at least game moments out of these merged tribals, but also end up being like really game changing tribals throughout it. And at number seven, we're starting it off with one of the few successful idol plays on the board. Here we are going to Survivor Worlds Apart. And this is a tribal where I do think before the actual vote, it's mostly just fine. It's not boring, but it does feel like there's a lot of tension in the air with the players really talking around the vote and talking about how there's going going to be an ice pick to draw the lines tonight and Dan eventually says at the end that it's not going to be an ice pick it's going to be a chainsaw and like this is just kind of ridiculous but we say like Will says that Jeff Probst might even get voted out tonight and that leads to everyone laughing and that's a notable moment but again really the bulk of this tribal leads up to the actual vote where we get Jen surprising everyone and playing her idol during which we get some great reactions from the no callers where Joe calls Jen a savage and Haley calls her a genius we have Shireen clearly being excited from the side and also the way the votes are revealed is really fun here too where obviously Jen plays her idol but first comes up the Haley vote which makes them think that oh no we failed here only for it to then be followed up by a landslide of Jen votes with her obviously progressingly getting happier and happier with every vote and it ends up with Kelly Remington being blindsided with only four votes who again not a big loss this season to lose her here certainly made for a fun blindside here and through this we do see some fun reactions through Rodney in particular being really pissed that this happened Saying, I, I think this is a fantastic blindside that has a fine enough tribal around it to keep it in the top tier at number seven. Now, number six, we have one of the most iconic tribals of all time in my eyes, but one that, again, I feel like is similar to the previous one where before the vote, it's kind of just okay. So while the actual vote off itself is an all-time great one, it doesn't quite match the level of the top five where I feel like all of them are more entertaining throughout. And at number six, we do have the merge tribal from Survivor Fiji, where Edgardo goes home. Again, a really iconic vote out. The first usage of the safe vote 
in voting for a particular person to avoid an idle play. And we do get some masterful gameplay across this round. And through that comes some really great reactions where Alex obviously ends up playing his idol. But through that, the four horsemen look really cocky. Though, to be honest, I don't know why they do. Because considering the first three votes that end up being shown are all their Cassandra votes, which shouldn't that make it pretty obvious that, oh, we got screwed over here, but our idol wasn't successful, but I guess they didn't really pick up on it. And then we get like a Mookie vote, which is a bit of a surprise, but then we get the landslide of Edgardo votes, which obviously we get the great reaction from Earl looking all smug. Well, we have this great reaction from the jury from Rocky, but again, like this is an all-time great vote off, but the actual tribal before it is just kind of fine. Like, there's not that much of interest going on before it, where it's really just talk about how this was the most chaotic day ever. And even Yao, like, kind of openly says the plan, which is really weird, where he openly says that we're avoiding voting for someone with an idol and voting for someone in that person's alliance instead, which also should have been an indicator that, okay, maybe Edgardo should be in danger here, but again, doesn't click. Anyway, we get an incredible vote off here, which leaves it here at number six. Now, number five, and again, for me, I feel like these top five are all consistently great from beginning to end. And at number five, we're starting it off with Survivor South Pacific. And it's kind of ironic that this and the next season we'll be talking about are two poorly regarded seasons, though both of them have incredible merge tribals. And a lot of it comes from the fact that after the merge tribal, the season goes a bit downhill in the sense that it's a Pekongi. But again, the South Pacific one here has a really interesting vote off here where it ends up initially going to a tie, but then we have Cochran flipping, completely shaking up the game and leading to a lot of great reactions from his old Savai members where Jim calls him a coward. And then we have Brandon trying to defend him. And we also have like Cochran flipping in a situation where Ozzy had just played his idol on Whitney and through them having two immunity necklaces on their side and Keith also getting immunity from having the votes on tiebreaker. Like Cochran folds in a situation here that's a 5v2. Like he had a great advantage in this rock draw ends up flipping anyway which i think also leads to greater frustrations from the society members but even before that i think the tribal is still really strong before the keith blind side where we have this face-off between the two sides where we have upolu openly mocking ozzy for his bad acting skills and sophie talking about how offended she is that they thought that they wouldn't believe that but then we have Ozzy pulling out his idol. Yeah, a lot of talk about the odds and how it makes no sense for anyone to flip from Savai, which, again, it doesn't. But again, like, as a whole, consistently entertaining tribal. This battle between the two sides at the beginning of it, and then we end with the Cochrane flip. Again, incredible tribal all around here at number five. Now, number four, again, another poorly regarded season, but has an incredible merge tribal, and that is from Survivor Redemption Island where we do have Matt being blindsided immediately after coming back to the game, being sent directly back to Redemption Island. And again, incredible vote off here. I mean, the brilliance of Boston Rob to flip the votes onto Matt while also end up flushing Ralph's idol and securing the Ometepe numbers moving forward. Again, great move there. We have this notable line from David saying genius is what that was. And we get some great reactions along the way where again, like initially we get the five grant votes from Zapatera. And then we get the Steve vote where we see the drop on Steve's face thinking that he's about to be voted out. And then we get the Matt reveal where we get the relief there. And again, all that's really fun too. And even before that, we get some fun from David versus Philip over talking about how Zapatera threw a challenge. And we also have Zapatera and Obatepe clearly being divided from the offset with Ashley talking about how they're keeping all their rewards. And again, just in general, Philip is a fun presence across this tribal with him talking about how Zapatera is a tribe that likes deceit and it's parasitic. And through that, we have the Omotepe members laughing at how ridiculously he says it. And again, overall, it is a fun tribal through and through with an incredible vote off that leaves it here number four. Now, number three, we're moving on to one of the most recent tribals on the board. We are moving to Survivor 41. And I'll be honest, I kind of forgot how incredible this tribal was before the rewatch, where this is one of the most insane tribals quite possibly in the history of the show, where we obviously come into this tribal with Liana thinking that she's going to use the knowledge's power and use it correctly. So through that, we don't have the majority thinking about splitting the votes as they're not worried about an idol. And this is where we have Xander pulling out his fake idol and talking about playing it on Evie, during which we do have like Deshaun ratting Evie out about what they told Deshaun on ship wheel, to which that does cause some distrust between Xander and Evie. But then we get to Liana playing the knowledge's power, to which she asks Xander if he has the idol. 
obviously clearly thinking he clearly has one because he pulled out the fake one. And then we get the flashback to him giving all of his advantages to Tiffany and obviously knowledge his power ended up being unsuccessful, which is an incredible moment in itself. But through this, is also means that now the majority has to worry about an idol, which leads to a live tribal. Surprisingly, the only true live tribal on this merged tribal list. You would think that there would be more considering how prominent they were in the late 30s of Survivor. But for some reason, this is the only one that has one. And it is a lot of fun. I mean, it is really chaotic to see like the Sean trying to split the vote onto Sydney now. And Evie tries to pull over Nasir and Sydney to put the votes on the Sean. The Sean ends up talking about using his extra votes, which he ends up doing. We have the Yasas catching wind of Sydney being the target and through that tell her she's the target. And even after votes are cast, we get a really fun segment where again, like the Sean uses extra vote. Sydney uses her shot in the dark and ends up failing. And then we have Tiffany wanting to use Xander's idol on Evie, but he tells her not to, all leading to an insane vote where we get a five to four to three vote where Sydney is the one that ends up going home. Like a really insane series of events here. I, again, forgot how insane this tribal was. But again, on the rewatch, this really is a top tier tribal with both this insane Sydney blindside, but then also the events of the knowledge's power. And because of that, for me, it lands here at number three. Now, number two. And for me, the top two were definitive from the beginning. I, I would have been very surprised if these weren't the top two. And coincidentally, they're from my two favorite seasons of all time. But at number two, we are. Keeping in line my season ranking, we do have heroes versus villains. Here we do have the JT boot, which again, this is another one that the tribal itself, even before the actual vote, is also really fun. We have this debate over banana etiquette, which leads to Danielle and Rupert arguing over ripe bananas. And we have this ridiculous line from Rupert where he says, we have ripe bananas all the time, but we let them ripen. And this then cuts to Russell saying, who cares? Let's play the game. We then have Parvati talking about how everyone's avoiding her. And Jeff like calls her out for saying that he thinks it's due to her being used to getting so much attention in life, which is just a weird thing to say. We also have Colby like kind of ruining the plan in a way where he says, maybe we're targeting someone else on the villains. And so we know we'll have time to get to know you later, which is like, why are you saying this? But then we get to the votes where again, we get some great moments from Russell saying, JT, you were dumb to give me the idol. We have Parvati saying, this is my love letter to you. We have Rupert saying, I hope Parvati plays the idol and shows everyone Russell is a liar. And then we obviously get the double idol play, which is an incredible TV moment. Probably the biggest individual move made in Survivor history up until this point, where we have Parvati playing both of her idols, not on herself, but on Jerry and on Sandra, the two people that could be safe votes. And again, like I've talked about this vote numerous times that I never found this like read to be the greatest in the world, though it's still an extremely ballsy play to make here and does lead to an obvious great downside for JT with this setup from the last few episodes culminating in his boot here. Again, really great TV, one of the all-time great tribals. It's here number two. Now number one, and I mean, this is my favorite tribal of all time, let alone merge tribal. And and this is also just all around one of my favorite moments in all of Survivor. So at number one, we do have the Merge Tribal from Survivor Kageon. And again, this is an insane tribal from beginning to end. I mean, we do start off a bit with like LJ being propped up as a big threat, but eventually we get to Tony where he does talk about needing an alliance of comfort over numbers and follow this up with LJ being asked about idols to which LJ has this ridiculous response of saying he doesn't know if there are any and that this could be some big survivor joke to which Tony announces that he does have an idol and he's going to use it for one of his tribe members and then Spencer asks him to pull it out to which he does and this is an incredible scene as obviously Tony was going to be the target coming into tribal here and we have Tony really playing it up here, talking about how this is going to be a community idol. As we have like Spencer and Tasha frantically trying to change the vote here, telling everyone to vote the other one, while we have the other group saying keep it the same. Again, it really feels this big epic battle that is going to happen here. And we have Jeff saying, I love when a vote is this alive. So then we get to the votes and then afterwards we have Tony getting up and saying, can you validate this for me, Jeff? To which he ends up playing his idol on LJ which leads to LJ feeling guilty and getting up and playing his idol on Tony. Again, insane that two idols are played here by the same alliance back to back. Mind you, idiotic in the way that they're played, specifically the LJ one. But again, such an insane series of events here that we get two idols played and we get this fake reaction from people like Spencer and Tasha who are pretending to be sad only for us to get the first vote reveal. And it turns out to be Jeffra, meaning that both the idols were played for not. 
And again, this is just amazing up and downs throughout this entire tribal. These shocked faces when the Jeffra vote comes up. And then it's Sarah, Jeffra, Sarah, Jeffra, all leading up to the final vote being revealed. Where again, you would assume it's Jeffra as the other side has the numbers, but then it turns out to be Sarah. And you have this big reaction from the entire group, a lot of clapping going on. We get Sarah asking who flipped, and they reveal that it's Cass. I get a really insane series of events here. That all ends with a fun little capper in Spencer saying, Cass, 0% chance of winning the game, which, again, kind of sums up this entire tribal. Really incredible trial from beginning to end. One of the best series of events in the history of Survivor to me. It's your number one. But there we go. And that is my ranking of every merge tribal council in the history of Survivor US. Again, this is all lead up to me doing my ranking of every merge episode, which will be coming in the near future. So stay tuned for that. But for now, that is the video. Thank you for watching.